Yes, there is always drama with Team Melly, but we've got other things to talk about. For today's episode, it is part one of analyzing the national team of Wales. You know the deal, and you know what time it is. It's time for Team Melly Talk. been a long time, but Wales is back in the World Cup. Hey everyone, welcome back to Team Melee Talk. And for today's episode, I am excited to be joined by Thomas Wynn Lewis, a sports journalist for North Wales Live, and he is also a fan of Wrexham. Thomas, welcome to Team Melee Talk. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Art. Yeah, it's lovely to be here and um, yeah, thanks for inviting me. And before we get to our agenda, we know you are a huge fan of the national team of Wales. And I'm going to do my best to pronounce this in Welsh. Is it Kemru? It's not far off, uh, it's not far off, it's Cymru. So yeah, it's it's Cymru. But to be fair, um, that's one of the better pronunciation efforts I've heard. So well done. All right, thank you. Well, always glad to hear about that. Always glad to hear those uh, comments. Um, but, you know, first, tell us about your career. You know, what got you, you know, what led you to uh, sports journalism? You know, what were the teams that you supported growing up? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have um, a traditional route into uh, sports journalism, really. Um, you know, I sort of grew up uh, North Wales, where I'm from, is uh, a big footballing area. People love football in North Wales. And um, my dad is a, is a big Everton fan, but um, my tide, which is well for grandfather, um, he um, he took me to, to watch Wrexham when I was a child. And, uh, and yeah, I was hooked ever since. Um, there's been a lot of bad times, but uh, but yeah, hopefully hopefully things are looking good for uh, for Wrexham now. Uh, but yeah, I've been been a massive Wrexham fan most of my life since I was a kid, and uh, played for my local team as well, Fan Um I managed them as well, uh, and yeah, about twelve months ago, I managed to get a job as a as a journalist covering uh, covering Welsh football. So um, so yeah, really enjoying it. Uh, it's great at the moment, obviously with everything going on in Welsh football, qualifying for the World Cup. So, um, so yeah, long may it continue. As we know, Wales will be participating in the World Cup for the first time since 1958. And my question for you, Thomas, is how happy were you when Wales qualified and how long had you been waiting for this moment? Oh, yeah, like my whole life, basically. Um, I wasn't alive in 1958, I've got to tell you that just to start off. But, uh, but yeah, I, um, yeah, basically it's always been a dream to see Wales in a World Cup. It was absolutely fantastic in 2016. Uh, you may remember, obviously, we got to the semi-finals. Uh, that was absolutely amazing. But I've got to say, a World Cup is just the next level. That is the absolute dream for Wales fans. And um, and yeah, everyone just can't wait. Um, you know, we could talk talk about, you know, maybe Qatar not being the ideal host for various reasons. But... I mean, um, you know, it, it, it is an absolute dream and um, and it's just going to be, it's going to be emotional, actually. I'm not, not scared to admit it's going to be quite emotional seeing Wales finally play in a World Cup. Well, I'm really excited for you. And, you know, once again, well, congratulations to your national team for qualifying. And, you know, whenever we think of, you know, whenever they show scenes of celebration, like you mentioned, the Euro, Euro 2016, I remember that run very well. They would always show clips of fans, you know, getting together at fan zones like at Cardiff Castle. But can can you please describe the scenes for us? You know, what was going on in North Wales when Wales qualified to the World Cup after that one nil victory over Ukraine? Oh, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. I was I was at the game in Cardiff, but um, but yeah, no, it was it was just absolutely superb. I mean, um, you know, for for years and years and years, people have just dreamed of uh, of just seeing just seeing Wales at reach a World Cup final, and um, and I think especially the older generation, I've got to say, because Wales have um, Wales have sort of uh, they've they've fallen at the final hurdle on so many occasions. Uh, there was 1993 before the USA World Cup, where um, where uh, Paul Bowden hit the bar from a penalty against Romania, and there's just been so many near misses. And, uh, and yeah, there's quite a lot of emotion, really. Um, and especially just speaking as like people like my father, my, my grandfather and people like that. They've just waited for so long, their whole lives, just to see Wales actually make it. And um, there was a lot of alcohol drunk in uh, Wales that night. So, uh, so yeah, and maybe, maybe some babies made as well. Who knows? All right. Well, World Cup babies, we could call them. Or, you know, I'm sure there'd be some very creative names for those babies, for sure. 
yeah. A few, a few, a few gadgets and a few add-ins, I think, maybe, yeah. All right. It's time for the main part of our agenda, and that is Group B of the 2022 World Cup, which consists of England, Iran, United States, and Wales. So tell me, what are the Welsh football experts saying about this group? And are there a lot of football experts in Wales demanding that Wales get to the knockout phase? No, I think I think thankfully, um, I think we. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't like to sort of talk about uh, about England too much, but there's a massive, massive difference in in mentality and psychology between the Welsh people and the English people. And that, and the main thing is uh, the English press, especially, they expect, even though they haven't won a World Cup since 1966, they expect their team to win every tournament they go into. We don't have that burden. Um, we we sort of. We tend to sort of um, enjoy enjoy the ride, enjoy the experience, enjoy the tournaments. Yes, we want to win. Everyone wants to win, but I think I think we we don't put a lot of pressure on our players, and um, and we we sort of um, we treat our players as heroes because at the end of the day, for us as a small nation, uh, Wales is a nation of three million people or just over three million people. It's it's a massive achievement just to get there. I mean, if you look at us uh, compared to yourselves in Iran, uh, the USA, England, all three are countries with really big populations. Um, we're a tiny nation. Um, we're a very proud nation, very big football nation. But in terms of population, in terms of the size of the country, we're tiny. So I think, I think, um, yeah, I think we're, we're not demanding anything from the team, but I think we're quietly confident at as well. I've got to say, I think, um, I think there's a bit of a confidence from the experts, from the fans. I think we feel like we can qualify out of this group. I think it's a really difficult group to call, by the way. England already, they, they, they're already coming out and saying we're going to win the group and all that. The, the other three of us, I think we're, we're a bit more level-headed, I think. And, um, and I think we, you know, uh, Iran, USA, ourselves, Wales, I think we'll be looking at it and going, we're quite confident, but at the same time, we're not going to be too arrogant about it. All right. Well, love the explanation, you know, and, <laughs> and what can I say? And I've been to Wales before. Great country. I really enjoyed myself when I was there. Um, you know, and of course, making a comparison to another team in this group, let's face it, right? Wales and England did not have good results in Nations League in June. But, you know, from your point of view, you know, how could uh, Welsh football fans even be bothered after qualifying to the World Cup? I mean, how could you even think about Nations League, you know, having just, what, yeah. one draw? That was it, right? Yeah, exactly true against Belgium and, uh, yeah, lost against uh, the three games against Poland. Uh, um, sorry, one game against Poland and two against uh, the Netherlands. But, um, yeah, we, we, we didn't play our strongest 11, really, in any of the Nations League games. And, and you're absolutely right in what you say, Art. Um, you know, it was all about qualifying for the World Cup. I think had we, the, the initial uh, World Cup qualifiers were supposed to be in March. I think if that had happened, I think we'd have played our um, our first 11 in, in all of those games. But as it was, it was all about qualification. Um, pardon me. And, um, and yeah, we, we, we got that. So the Nations League has been great for Wales. It's been, um, you know, we, we've done really well in it over the over the um, over the last couple of campaigns over the last four years. But um, you know, that's why we found ourselves in League A. But uh, but yeah, I think this time around, it you know, it wasn't um, it wasn't a big deal for us. But we put in good two good performances. It's very strange actually. Two games against the Netherlands, uh, we conceded an injury time in both games. Um, so it, very very close games and. You know, on a different day, maybe Wales would have won. But, um, but no, as, as you rightly said there, I think you're absolutely bang on. I think, um, you know, it was all about qualification and, uh, and yeah, no, no one was too bothered, really. Now, Bale is the man. But besides Gareth Bale, who do you think will be the biggest problem for the national team of Iran? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right to uh, to pinpoint Gareth Bale. He he is the main man. He has been for a long time. But um, but even though he's had his struggles in club football, uh, Aaron Ramsey, uh, you know, he, he has not. He didn't have a great time at Juventus. Uh, but he's in a Wales shirt. Aaron Ramsey is world class. Uh, when he plays for Wales, he's absolutely fantastic. And uh, and you know, we're, we're very lucky to have Aaron Ramsey in the centre midfield. I think. 
perhaps a player may, maybe maybe not too many um, Iran fans will, will know too much about is Brennan Johnson. Um, he's just uh, he's just got into the Premier League now. He's um, he's making a name for himself. He he looks like a really exciting player. Uh, he's definitely someone that Wales fans have got high hopes for. Um, I've got to say as well, uh, Nico Williams, another Nottingham Forest player, actually, uh, really talented fullback, and um, and yeah, he's he's you know he, even though he's a defender, he's he's very good going forward, and um, and he's another player who's been fantastic uh, for Wales as well. So um, yeah, we're we're very lucky. We've got a good we've got a good squad and, and some good players. Um, but w- what I like about uh, our players is. They can they can perhaps not have the best time in club football, but as soon as they come and put a whale shirt on, they'll put the performance of their lives and they'll run all night and and um, and yeah, that's it's just great to see for us. Um, and uh, and yeah, you know the likes of Gareth Bale, you know he's he's said it time and time again. I mean, playing for Wales is is the highlight for him. So you know, as as a supporter, that's just you know a dream to hear from someone like that, isn't it? We are getting closer to wrapping up this edition of Team Ellie Talk. But, you know, Thomas, I must say, you beat me to something I wanted to mention. I wanted to finish off by talking about some of these, you know, other secret weapons uh, for the Welsh national team. And you got to Brennan Johnson. He is, a, he is one of the players I did my homework on. You know, to me, he comes off as a player that's very dangerous off the bench because, you know, Wales have their starting 11. I mean, I think he's, he's obviously good enough to start, but I think he's that much more useful coming off the bench, you know, providing that spark. And another yeah. player I wanted to mention is um, Ethan Ampadu. He plays for Chelsea, but he's only made one appearance for Chelsea uh, since 2017. But you know he's 21 years old, and he could play as a defense. He could play as a defensive midfielder and as a center back. So is he really yeah. that? Is he really that um, very? Is, to me, he comes off as that really important player for this Welsh team. I mean, if he brings a pretty, he brings a very good dynamic to the squad. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think you're absolutely bang on everything you've said. I agree with that. Ampadu is, um, he's had, I think, um, maybe four loan spells now. And like you say, he hasn't quite made it at Chelsea, but he's been to uh, Venezia in Italy. He's been to Sheffield United. Um, he's, he's been on loan to various clubs and um, very, very good player. Like you say, he can play cent- centre-back, he can play centre-midfield. Um, yeah, very, very talented player. And and like you said, 21 years old, but I believe he's he's got nearly 40 caps now, which is incredible for a 21-year-old, really. Um, so that just shows you how important he is. Uh, just going back to what you said, that as well. Um, yeah, you, uh, you're right in saying Brennan Johnson, I think, probably will start off the bench. I think Daniel James tends to be preferred. Uh, Robert Page prefers Daniel James to start, but... Um, but yeah, I think we're very lucky in that we've we've got some players that can come off the bench. And in terms of secret weapons, uh, Harry Wilson's another player who um, who's very dangerous off the bench as well. So so we're very lucky, um, you know. But um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be a really interesting game. It's really hard to call uh, for us in the three group games. And um, you know, uh, having spoken to you and um, and you know you've invited me on the show, I, I'm really really hopeful that. Uh, that Wales and, and Iran can go through and uh, and America and, and England will go home. That would be the dream for me. Well, you know what? I'd have no problem with that at all whatsoever. So I definitely like your thinking. And Thomas, I would just like to thank you for taking the time. It really was a pleasure to have you on the show. No, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for having me on the show as well. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. My pleasure. Once again, thank you for accepting the invitation and, you know, hope we get to cross paths and, you know, have a good chat in, in Doha. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Art. Yeah, hopefully that happens. And that's it, everybody, for this edition of Team Melly Talk. As always, really do appreciate the support. Make sure you get to our website, www.teammellytalk.com. Remember, this is your best source for the latest news on Team Melly, the national team of Iran. Make sure you find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know the handle, at Team Melly Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button. See you on the next edition of Team Melly Talk.